Murray Hale, welcome back to the Marketing for Business podcast. Thanks, Scott. Uh, you're the first person who has made a second appearance. And the cool part about today is if you're listening to this, this man has done something pretty awesome. You were the first person to do what? 50 million in, in sales, radio sales for media Yeah. Yep. 50 million. What does that mean to you, Murray? It's a lot of money. Yeah. I, uh, the highest before me was 48 million. And um, I message him every year. I have done for the last 10 years to say that I'm hunting down his goal. <laughs> I think what it's good about his name, Mark Nelson, it's good to have someone to emulate yourself on, yeah, yeah. turnover and um, the way they operate. And um, he's, uh, I messaged him the other day and he was um, very complimentary. So, but for me, what it is, is I've had the goal for 10 years, so yeah. to finally get there was very, very exciting for me. So when you think about it, I think the last time we had you on the podcast, you were around that 46, 47. Um, you know, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of volume to sell for one person. And so you and Mark are, uh, are miles ahead of everyone else. What's the next person? Uh, what are they sitting around? Um, 36. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah, so just still a huge amount, but but it's nowhere near the fifty. So fifty million for you though. What does that mean? Like, what is when you look at you know your journey you've started and and, and you know obviously setting goals etc. You look back on that. What does that fifty million represent? Apart from uh, the money. Yeah, uh, it represents um, to me client success. Yep. Clients confidence. It represents a. Uh, a long learning curve. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I started in June '99, and my biggest client was eight hundred dollars, the Wood End Hotel. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I used to have to run karaoke competitions every three months. And before that, I was in charge of Victoria and Tasmania, and um, for BOC um, safety in Melbourne. Yeah. So I sort of fell out of. So you went that from role. being the you went from being the big show to yes, the, the big show the big to, show to a, a commission rep. Wow. Right. And so is it is it like I know we talked about this last time. You you they just didn't didn't like radio sales. You you were not you weren't a fan. No like. no it wasn't a fan because I'd always I've only ever had work for four companies. Yeah. Uh, worked in a bank for ten years. Liquor retailing for eight years with Lion Nathan and eight years with BOC Gases yeah. in three countries, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea and Australia. And I'd always work with products you could hang on to, see and feel. Yeah. Whereas with advertising, you can hear it and see it, but it disappears. Yeah, it's untangible, eh? Yeah, yeah. Well, it is tangible now, mm. but it's untangible in the fact that it disappears on yeah. you, right? So, so when did you like, because, okay, so you got to a point where you just, you must have decided at some stage, hey, like I've either got to get good at this or leave, right? Like, so when did, when was that point and what was that decision? That, like, was that when you decided, right, I'm going to do 50 million or that kind no, of bit later? No, the journey yeah. is, uh, after 18 months, I was so, I felt I was not very good at the job mm. and didn't like the job. Yeah. And because it's very, very hard industry to get started in advertising. Yeah. From zero. And uh, after 18 months, I decided I was really unhappy. And I decided if you're that unhappy, you got two choices. Yeah. One is leave and give uh-huh. up. Yeah. And one is be unhappy and have a go. So, <laughs> I, so I, not great choices, I know, but not great options, I should yeah, say. Yeah. And, um, but they're options, right? Yeah, they're options. So. And, and I think that's the point. Like, you know, sometimes people, when they look at what they're doing, you know, they, they, at least you were prepared to make a decision. You, had, you, had, you looked at your, your choices, you had two, and you had to make one of them, you know. So, so you chose option Option to be unhappy and have a go. Yeah. And then after about two years... It got slightly better, and I thought, I might be a small chance with this. Yeah. And after two and a half to three years, I actually thought I might be able to do this yeah. and make a reasonable you, career of it. Do you remember what you're unhappy about? Because there's, there'll be loads of people like listening and and going, geez, I've, I'm unhappy about some stuff. Do you know what it was that you were unhappy about? Oh, was it? 100%. Yeah. I know what I was unhappy about. You know, I was failing. Yeah. 
So right. just the the fact that you felt like you were failing. Well, no, I was. Yeah, yeah, I was. And, and what was failure for you? Was that you you weren't selling enough, or you? Uh, yeah, I couldn't get I couldn't get the results. I didn't understand what I was doing. Yeah. Um, I struggled struggled with just not performing. Mm. I'd always always worked hard and been able to perform in other roles to. Yeah. Um, a certain level, and I always wanted to be better. Um, yeah. I just couldn't see any way out. And you know, you got to remember, I thought I'd made it. I had a box on the MCG, yeah, yeah. halfway line. I had, I was in charge of Victoria, Tasmania. Yeah. I really thought I'd, I'd landed the job, uh, biggest job I've ever had. Yeah. And to come and fall out of that for personal reasons, because my family wanted to come home. Yeah. You know, I got it taken away from me. Yeah. So were you always comparing of where you were to where, oh, like where you thought you would be compared to where you were? Oh, 100%. 100% yeah. for the first couple of years. And um, and also, you know, when you don't know what you're doing mm. or you're struggling to understand what you're doing yeah. and how to make it work, it's very, very hard to be good at anything. Yep. And it doesn't feel right. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. And, you know, when you're in a bit of a hole yourself. Yeah. It's um, and not thinking, you know, it's always about the top two inches. Yeah. Right? Totally. If you can get the top two inches right, you're fine. I always find it interesting with people as well. People think people that go good, they're lucky mm. and they've had it yeah. easy, you yeah. know, whatever. But you'll find most people that go good, whether it be in anything, it's because they've committed more, they've worked harder. Yeah. They've understood more and they're prepared to do things other people won't do. Yeah, totally. You know, um, and it's the things other people won't do yeah. that I find the interesting part. Yeah. You know, all salespeople have one or two things and people in business have one or two things that they do way better than someone else. Yeah, totally. And, and they realise it at the end of the day and they start doing more of it. And they keep going and keep going and keep going because they know, well, I guess they've, they've seen other people be successful at it. Is that what you started to see? They just was, were, was there anyone else apart from Mark? Were they leading the way for you and going, you know what, Murray, you hang in here? Like, were people in your corner? No, no, not really. I, um, I learned pretty quickly if within, so when I say quickly, two years. Yeah. If you want to go good, watch someone in the industry or learn about someone in the industry that yep. goes good. Yep. So I studied a certain person in the industry and I knew, I, nice. I got the clients to teach me yeah. why he was good because I asked them uh, why he was good. Yeah, nice. And, they, and I knew everything about that person. Yep. I knew the way his facial expressions, I knew the way he, what he would say, I knew the way he crossed his legs, yep. I learnt the way he sold, I learnt how he sold. So I took that base model and mm. applied that, not my own characteristics, and, and but the way he sold, I applied that to the way I sell. Nice. And I could actually go and meet his clients and rehearse exactly what he did. Mm. And I said, I'll show you what he did. before. Yeah. But I, I used to show his clients what he would do. Nice. Right? And they'd sit and laugh. Yeah, right? yeah. But, uh, and it gave me a great eye-opening into it because... The reason why I couldn't break in either was because these people were locals. Yep. And if you're a local Christchurch person with mm. a school here and you come from outside, it's harder for you. Yeah. And it just is. Yeah, definitely back in the day, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and it's just the way it is. And and so, okay, so success leaves clues. You found someone to model. What were some of the specific things that you started to do then to get the results that you wanted to achieve? And you, when did you, you notice things started to turn around? Because it, it, sales, it's real easy to get into a rut, right? You know, and it's and it's sometimes as a sales, you getting yourself out of that rut, you know. So you're modeling success. What are some of the specific things? Do you remember what you were doing? Yeah, yeah, I do. I look, as far as just, I want to address the rut thing. Hmm. Um, I'm personally too scared to get into a rut. Yep. Because, and I use the word scared, probably yep. scared, uncomfortable, all those things. Uh, a rut is going backwards. Yeah. Staying the same is probably going backwards. Mm. Wherever you are in the sales journey, journey, you need to continually improve. And unfortunately, that's a word used too often without substance. Yep. Because people say, I'm... 
you've got to do the things that make you better. So if you take your turn over now and you say, right, I'm doing this now, the first thing you should be concentrating on is trying to make sure you have retention of clients. Yeah. You know, far too many people talk about growing instead of retaining. And I think retention is actually more important yeah, yeah. than growing. Yeah. Right? Because why would you not try and keep the business you've got? Yeah. And a lot of people would take that for granted that they think they're entitled to that. Yeah. But you've got to work hard at that. Yeah, that, and, and that's if you look at your your success over the years, that's kind of been one of your, I guess, little um, gems, right? Like you have been very, very good at retaining your clients over a long period of time and, and getting them, um, you know, all in sync with, with you know, because you, you, I guess, you probably educated clients as well that, hey, you know, advertising and marketing, it takes a little bit of time um, and, and you've sold completely different maybe... F- than ninety percent of people in radio. Yeah, look, I think it's, um, I think it's, uh, like I've, I counted out the other day when I made that speech at mm. our Christmas do drinks for my clients, and you know there was eight or nine people been there over twenty years. Yeah, you know I've only been in the industry twenty three years. Yeah, yeah, and then there's another. Yeah, that's what, huge, right? Yeah, there is. It's well, it's a long mm. time. It's yeah. a lot of investment. Yeah. It's a lot of time putting up with me. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm sure they'll be the first to admit some of the clients. They've got sick of me at times. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that's life. But also, you know, there's probably another 12 to 15 being there over 10 years. Yeah. I think probably the most I've learnt is actually from the clients. Yeah. The owner-operators. Yes. You know... It's their money. Yeah. yeah. They, they they teach you things because they want you to go good with them. Yeah. Right? Yeah, Naturally, true. Naturally, naturally they want to go yeah. good themselves, for yes. themselves first, right? But the reality is, if they know you're passionate about their business and passionate about their results, and I don't say that lightly. No. Because I genuinely want them to win. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and if they win... I don't really have to worry about too much no. else, right? And that's the coolest thing, right? And yeah. that is the coolest thing. And, and to win, to win though, like you are very good at understanding, well, what is it that makes them win? What do they need to win? What's the environment that you need to create so they win? Because it, it, it's real easy to say, I want them to win, but without understanding what makes them win, you're never going to get there. No. It's funny, funny you brought that up, actually. I was thinking about something earlier on and... I was giving any advice to any new rep that's getting into a different field or, yep. in fact, any rep in any business, you know, maybe do a small business course, yeah, right, or read some small business books yeah. or do an online course. Why so, would you say that? Well, if I come to you, if I come to you... I actually know why you should say that, but I want you to tell people. Right. If I come to you and I say, okay, Scott, we're going to um, put a campaign together mm. and um, I'll talk to you about a bit about your product and uh, your what you turn over now, what your expectations are for a, few, for a successful um, campaign based on the amount of extra product you want to sell. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what, what does that feel like and look like? What's your average margin? Mm. Right, you know, if you want to sell, for instance, let's call your product your average sale a hundred bucks, yeah, and your GP's thirty five percent, right? So that's thirty five dollars gross profit, isn't it? Mm. Okay, so if you want to sell a hundred of those items at thirty five dollars, yeah, that's three and a half thousand dollars, isn't it? Mm. Gross profit. Mm. So if I'm pitching you a campaign that's five thousand dollars, yeah, right. They don't add, it doesn't add up, does no, it? No. And you got to remember, if you said the, the quantity, you'll overstate the quantity as a client because yeah. you, you. But if I, I don't agree to it if you overstate it. No. Right. Because and and your average sale, you'll probably hedge that down a bit as well. Yeah. Right. Because you know, if I agree to it, it means that I'm setting myself up to not achieve your goals as well. Yeah. Totally. Right. So, and, and that's where you get no longevity. Uh, well, that's the problem. 
Were you doing that early on? Was that what you were? Is that why you were getting no results? Like, it was... um, I was doing that. No, earlier on, I was doing lots of things wrong. Okay, right. <laughs> so it wasn't <laughs> just one thing. Yeah, right. So, and, so, but, but, okay. So, for a new person coming in, or anyone really, just understand the basics of business. Yes. Understand yeah. some numbers, so you can have a proper uh, conversation with a business owner. Hundred percent, you know, because if you don't understand those numbers, how can you learn about what they need to spend with you? Yeah, how can you learn about your product to match the yeah. results? Not just that client, no, other clients moving forward. Because what happens is you get a if you understand the margins, you understand the turnover, you understand the expectation, and then you come over here and you use your product with a spend, you can start working parallels what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. Then you've got creative over here which is, you know, just as important mm. and getting the message right. And the, you know, creative for me is about what would make me buy. Yep. And it's not always about buying now, but it's certainly about being there each month and buying they might not buy this month, they might not by next month, but yeah. you've got to give them some reason why they why they they would like you. Yeah. One of the tough questions is always in creative is what makes you different. Yeah. But a lot of the time you're not different. No. Right? And that's okay. Right? And that's okay because not everyone's advertising their product and service. No. Right? No, no, exactly. So so well look let's look at successful advertising then, you know, like what what is it what is it when you come into that you know, is it is it who you are, where you are, and what you have to offer, or is it just who you are and where you are? Like, what's what's, um, what's look, the key to I, that? I think it's uh, who you are, where you are, and what you've got to offer. Mm. Uh, and you know, it's about continually working on your sales model to find little snippets where you can be different. Yeah. You know, I could talk to you about few names we yeah talk to you about Paul Kelly well that's a great great story and if you know you it probably is a perfect one around who you are where you are and what you have to offer because there was loads of people trying to do that back in the day yes no one really did it that well and then Paul Kelly came along yeah and changed the game well he did change the game because without realizing it he found the sweet spot in yeah pricing mm. and it was 10 grand cars yeah and um, you'd be quite surprised at how the average buyer was. Yeah. Right? So what it said was that 10 grand, and he probably wouldn't have known this at the beginning, 10 grand was just a sweet spot with a person around 45 years old. Yep. Right? Okay. Because it was affordable, the product was good, and um, and I've um, and I found out something interesting in that. So anyway, we start. He started selling a lot of cars, yeah. like there's just hundreds, and yeah. hundreds, right? And um, you know, over a hundred a month, yeah. right? And then you know, it kept on going. But I think also too, you know, some things happened along the way. Well, firstly, I want to talk where he was. He had a good product, yeah. Right pricing. Easy for people to buy because they were all the same price. Yep. Uh, no confusion there, right? That's right. So you knew you were going to spend when you went yep. there, and and it was just and it worked. And then what happened was, and this is one little trick that we learned along the way was, free has no value. Yep. Why is that? Because we had no deposit. Yeah. And didn't make any difference yeah. to sales. Yep. Okay. But we put a dollar deposit in. Yep. So he used to have a jar on the table um, in his in his office. Yep. And if you were getting finance, you had to put a dollar in because that cemented the finance contract. Nice. <laughs> and then, so when we had a dollar, dollar, you could go and buy a ten thousand dollar car, ten thousand dollar car for a dollar down. Yeah, for a dollar down. It went nuts. Yeah, yeah. It was like having a sale. And, yeah. And it Cause, was... Because it just sounds different too, right? Like no yeah. deposit versus $1 down. That's right. Well, so all of a sudden you're cut through from everyone who was going like no deposit. Because no deposit now, people would like, oh, big deal. But a dollar was like, hey, that's different. 
wonder what that's about. Yeah, well, that's right, and there are a lot of people talking, but, you know, I could talk to you about, I spent a, quite a lot of time on him here, but, yeah. you know, but... But then did. once again, so so from from that though, from that advertising, like he doesn't, he just doesn't advertise. He didn't just advertise, you know, for a six week period. You know, he realised through obviously having better conversation with you. If you want to know who you are, where you are, and what you have to offer, it's a long term period. But then obviously that snowball started to happen because people knew who he was, where he was, and what he had to offer was a really really enticing offer. Uh, that people want it, right? Oh, hundred percent. So it really fulfilled the perfect the perfect storm as far as you know that consistency message, frequency reach to become relevant. You know, if you need a new car, um, he was on the shopping list. Oh, hundred percent. And uh, and if you needed a good quality car under for ten grand, yeah, well, he hasn't stopped advertising till today. And you know, no. I mean, that's twenty three years ago. But you know, if I talk about people too, like trade staff, Kevin Eater, I remember starting with him in a small office in Sydenham with his first employee was his general manager of the day. Yeah. Um, and um, he's recruit. He's working with a new one at the moment. Um, and um, But that business is massive in recruitment in New Zealand. Mm. Still owned by Kevin Holy himself, yep. Kevin Eater. Um, so was that another again who you are where you are and what you have to offer or was that another yeah, another play there yeah yeah well Kevin understood Kevin understood you needed to advertise to get your name out there mm. and Kevin's always voiced his commercials and he does a really good job of it and um, you know he's the owner of the company voicing yeah. it and yeah. he's the front man yeah. right and so he he always had a unique skill of being different because he was different himself and the way he spoke and the way he thought about recruitment. Yep. yep. You know, you know that business is amazing the way it looks after its its employees or yes. its candidates, right? Yes. It, it's just outstanding. Casuals, for instance, always get paid by trade staff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And they have permanent casuals. Yeah. And he looks after them and or the business looks after them you know if you go in recruitment you go to trade staff you know you're going to be looked after yeah and I think what that I, one of the coolest things with, with trade staff too is they have that they have a real um you know training they put a lot of investment into their people so you're not just you're not just you know a casual recruitment you've got the opportunity to really grow inside that business which i think yeah. that changed the game when it comes to recruitment because that wasn't the norm Oh, yeah. that's right. And I think also, too, I like the fact, too, that if you're in a job and you don't like the job yeah. and you're working for trade staff, yeah. and uh, so you're working with one of trade staff's clients, mm. uh, for one of trade staff's clients, yeah. if you don't like the job, you don't have to be stuck there. No. Right? You can go and talk yeah. to them and they'll look to place you somewhere else. Yeah. How cool is that? I well, actually my, listen. <laughs> well, I know because most um, I would suggest a lot of people in the recruitment industry just want yeah. to get paid and yeah. move that person move, over there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they're not like that. And then you know, I've, I, I'm starting to talk about a few of the clients here, and the reason why I'm talking about them is they've taught me so much. So mm. those two have taught me a lot. Yeah, Hayden from Mag and Turbos taught me a huge amount. That's a that's a high performing business. Yes. Like, it's on the rev limiter con- uh, uh, yeah. con- continuously, right? Yes. You know, and um, you just got to go in there to feel the vibe, don't you? Yeah, totally. Right. And so, uh, so do you think, like, you know, because you know, if we talk about building relationships and long term relationships, do you think it's been a bit of a win win for you as well? Like, obviously, you know, you're helping these business owners, but but you you're kind of learning and developing you know, your business skill along the way with them. And, and you know, I'm pretty sure you're probably offering them good value in, 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 in return. But is that one of the things that you really love? And, and I guess that's fueled your fire for, you know, going for the 50 million? Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, I wanted to be the best because I want them to be the best. Yeah. And I'm not saying I'm the best, but I've certainly got the biggest turnover. Yeah. Right? So I've always wanted them to be the best. Because I love winning. Yeah. I just love it. Yeah. You know, if winning's not important, I always say, you look at those people on the podium, there's one, two, and three. Yeah, yeah. How come two or three are always looking up at one? Yeah. And how come they always look so much happier? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I've always, yeah, I just, 
And if you're not winning, you just got to work harder and commit yeah. more and learn more. Yeah. You know. Where did you learn that though? Like, was that like? Uh, I probably learned that when I was young because you know I come f- from a family with my mother brought us yeah. up, and we didn't have money. Yeah. So I used to get a golf club a birthday, and uh, I got my first golf club when I was eleven. And there's fourteen. Golf I hope you got a driver. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. No, there's fourteen golf clubs in a set. It yep. didn't take me long to work out I was going to be 25 before I yeah. got my first set, right? Yeah. So, so you innovate. So I went and made my money. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, I was scrubbing butcher shop floors and mm. cleaning mincers in those days. And uh, what I liked about that was I loved getting paid. Mm. Right? Yeah. And because I could buy things. Yeah, yeah. And I could do things. And uh, so I learned fairly, fairly early on that you got to make money. Yeah. And, um, you know, so so what I got really out of those clients, and that's just some of them, there are, you know, there are lots of others, you know, I just want to quickly mention Novus, you know, Novus Class, yeah, totally. family owned business. Mm. Extraordinary. You know, extraordinary story, right? And uh, father brought a test kit out in 79, sent out from a mate of his in America, he used to go around supermarkets, Dennis Senior, mm. and um, repair chips and take a photo of the number plate, and then we'll send it through to insurance companies and hope he got paid. Yeah, right? yeah. And um, to '93 and start, I think it was '91 or '93, they started doing actual putting windscreens in, um, as opposed to just doing chips. Yeah, you know that business. I would suggest is the biggest biggest windscreen company in New Zealand. Easy. Yeah, and yeah. come from a family owned business, couple of boys and from Linwood, Linwood Way. Yeah. And um, took the took over the business, Mike and Tim. And uh, yeah, funny story, I used to deal with um, Smith & Smith through an agency yep. and Novus at the same yep. time, but after a while it didn't work out well, so. And those boys have taught me so much I can go to them about anything about business, yep, and they'll give me great advice, yeah, yeah, right, and because they care and they'll treat you as part of their family, yeah, you know, how cool is that? Like that's the ultimate of business, right? Like you actually become friends with these people because uh, you're working together to grow, you know, their pie bigger. Um, and what I love about what you talk about there, Murray, is you want to win, you want to help them win, so you don't actually have to focus on yourself. You just actually focus on the client and the customer and helping them win. And you've done that again and again and again, right? Yeah, well, you don't really have to worry about anything else. No. As long as they're happy to see you. I always say if they're happy to see you when you walk in the door, you've actually won. <laughs> yeah, true. Because <laughs> <laughs> in my early days, I'd walk in and I'm sure they thought, oh, it's not that advertising, <laughs> advertising guy again. He's going to ask me a whole lot of questions he yeah. knows nothing about. Yeah. And uh, he's going to try and get some money off me. Yeah. You've got to add value. Yeah. If you're just there to make a sale and get the money, it becomes pretty obvious. Yeah. Right. So how do you, like, you've built relationships with these, with these clients over the years and, and, you know, you've fostered them by, you know, a lot of them, you know, their families, all that sort of stuff now. How do you, how do you now handle, because, you, you know, to sell 50 million, you've got to start dealing with other parts of their business now as well, because some of these companies have grown bigger. Uh, they've now introduced other ma- uh, other people, either whether consultants, general managers. How do you keep those relationships going? What, when, and with with um, well, you need you need to grow with them. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, MediaWorks, who I um, work for, and I've got Hail Advertising as well. Um, I do TV, radio, and out of home. Yep. And a bit of digital. Uh, obviously, I use a. Digital influence yep. for um, my digital stuff for my clients, and I'm just a great believer in. I don't worry about the budgets. There is a budget, but whatever yep. needs to be done in the digital footprint needs to be done. Yep. Because I don't worry about my pie as much because my attitude is so I might do the TV, the billboards, and the radio. Yep. But if there's Say there's a hundred thousand dollars, and the digital needs forty, and that's sixty for me. If that's the right choice, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Because if they win and I grow their business, 
I'll grow both pies. Yeah, yeah, true. Right? And, and we've seen that, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And what I'm proud about that is it also keeps me relevant. So mm. I'm always trying to continually be better. But, you know, you, the owners of businesses have got to allow you that. Yes. Not everyone allows you to do that, right? Yeah, true. Right, and... Uh, but I really, my favourite thing is to be trusted and to be liked and make a difference for those businesses mm. because it's just so exciting if yeah. they, they win. And yeah, it's yeah. so exciting if their families win. Yeah. And because you don't have to worry about yourself because you'll always be fine. Yeah. Right? Well, what, what, that's an interesting thing that you said there, though. Like, some business owners don't allow you to go better, you know? What, what do you reckon that is, though? Because, you know, you've got enough... We've got enough proof now stacked up that this all works right. Why is it? What do you think? Some businesses, business owners, just don't allow you to go for them to go better. You know, for you to actually help yeah. them do that. I think I think it's a control thing, mm. and and I think I think they and they will do it with their staff. They will do it with the whole business, right? Yeah, it's so much about control, and. You can limit yourself yeah. that way. Yeah. You know, it's a bit like if I was sitting here thinking I know it all. Yeah. Right? Well, I won't learn. No. Right? You're never going to uh, grow, right? Like well, you're... that's right. So I'm sitting here now and like I'm, I was thinking about it. I'm slightly uncomfortable yeah. about getting this, the 50 million and mm. we changed it. So we changed it to the most ever in Media Works. Yeah. And that was um, on a billboard and a post on LinkedIn and bits mm. and pieces, right? So I'm 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 proud I've got it, but I'm sitting here now thinking I was thinking on the way here, I've already set my next goal. Yeah. So I'm already done. Yeah. With that, it's banked. Yeah. Right. Excuse the pun. Yeah. Right. So I really. So you're looking at you're looking at growth, and you yes. have a growth focused mindset. Yes. So, do you think some of these business owners that don't that are limiting their their their, their control is because they have a they they don't have a they have a they have a mindset, but it's maybe a fixed mindset. And a fixed mindset is, hey, this is the way it should be done, or this is the way I do it, the way that it's always been done. So, they don't let that lotus of control go. One hundred percent. Look, I think you've got to be willing to embrace new ideas and take your teams, your staff, your suppliers mm. with you and get their input. Because if they become part of the journey, you've got a bigger team that's more involved, yeah. right? And it will surprise you, outcomes will probably be better. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm a great believer if you make a decision that um, even a simple flow chart, do a simple flow chart on a whiteboard yep. about that decision and the impact on the business, that decision, good and bad. Yeah, yeah. You'll make a better decision at the bottom. Totally. Right? And, uh, you know, I did an ISO 9000 course in BRC Gases mm. and I learned a lot about when you make decisions, how you can make better decisions by yep. doing a simple flow chart okay. on a whiteboard. And, uh, but I think. It's the old story, you've got to be willing to embrace a team. You know, I look at me, I'm an individual in yep. media works, okay? Yep. Uh, individual sales goals, right? Yep. But I can't do it without good creative people. I can't do yep. it without a promo team. I can't, you know, I need the infrastructure, right? So I need that the team. That is definitely one thing I've seen you very good at as well. You're good at building relationships, building those long-term relationships, but you're also very good at getting good people around you uh, and and not controlling them, you know? No, look, if I go to a meeting with a promo person, I tell them on the way in the car that you know, they're in charge of the meeting. Nice. Right? And they go, well, I said, you'll work it out. Just run with it. Yeah. And because uh, I said the clients are great, right? So, and I said, you're the person that's going to run the promo, yeah. design the promo, come up with the ideas. So, and I just think it's a great way to learn too. Yeah, right? Totally. 
and uh, chuck them in the deep end. Well, yeah, but also, yeah, but they like it. They like well, it because not many people allow them to do it. Exactly. Right? Yeah, and that and I reckon that is one of the, the like one of the coolest things ever because you know the talented people. Yes. So let them be talented. Oh, one hundred percent. And uh, you know, I want the creative team to know all my clients because mm. I reckon they'll get so much more out of their yeah. out of their job. Yeah. You know, if they've been to their business, they understand their business. Uh, they understand them. You know, how good it must be when you ring me up on the phone next and you've talked to Chris at yeah. Chris Walsh at Tree Tech, right? Another super successful business, been you know, been with me over twenty years. Um, you know, I just think it's it's and I think it's fun. It makes yeah. their life and work life more enjoyable. Yeah, I I feel good about it because they're going good and they're doing yeah. their own job. But and what you just said then too is I do like to surround myself with good people. Mm. If I've got some weakness in what I'm doing, which is quite a few, is <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. But but I but I'm happy to admit I've got them, mm. and and uh, a lot of people are not. No. And um, but you know, I'll find someone that helps me fix that, right? You know. Yeah, that's and, what, and that's what I think is such a cool thing too. Like, and now you can you've got all these clients that you can go and talk to. And as you said before, they help you. You know, you have you got it's going through a tough period or whatever. You, you go and ask them some questions because chances are most most successful people, um, you know, that's that, that what I love about being a business owner and being around other business owners. You know, they're prepared to share what's gone on and how how they've handled the you know the, the hits and the, and the hard times because you know you learn more in those hard times than you do in, in your good times, right? Oh, one hundred percent. You learn more because you don't want to have them again. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly, and you, but and also you realise to go to those extra levels and keep going, then you have to. You, that is part of it, right? Getting slapped around and 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 refocusing and and seeing, you know, who the person that you really are, you know, and how do you, how you handle that pressure. Murray, this is an interesting question I'm going to give you because this is the reason I got you on this podcast today. Um, you know, I, I this this will come out. This podcast will come out the fourth of Jan. Uh, 2024, right? People are going to be sitting there. They're either on holiday or or they and or they, you know, they're thinking about the year in front, right? And they're thinking about shit. I want to sit down. I want and I want to create some things to to actually grow my uh, grow my business, make make my business better in 2024. If if you know if when you think about you know eight hundred dollars you made. You know, you and you went from the, the 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 you know the echelon, the top echelon to you know the first client eight hundred dollars to selling fifty million. Give someone five things that they need to start doing in twenty twenty four to be more successful than they were in twenty twenty three. Firstly, don't hope that you're going to have a year, another year like you had the last year if it was a good year. Okay. Hope doesn't. Hope doesn't work. Hope's not a strategy. No, it's not. It's not. So, so okay. So the, the the thinking there is, oh, they've gone, they've gone good, or what was something, you know. So just thinking, hey, to next year is going to be the same is not not going to get you through, right? Well, I'm sitting here now, and I'm hoping it's going to be good next year because yeah. I've had the best year ever. Right? Yeah. But I know that I've got to get out of that thinking rather yeah. quickly, right? Yeah. Because it's not a strategy. No. Right. So. My next advice would be to set a sales goal. Mm -hmm. Look at your team, look at your numbers. Look for where you can improve and help your team grow the business with you. Mm -hmm. So you set a target, right? Now, do you think it should be achievable, the target, when you're thinking about it? Like with the sitting down, Jane 4, uh, you know, they, maybe they did, you know, 3 million this year. Yeah. Is it three million and one? No. What most I was about to say say something mm. like that. What most businesses do, they'll take the three million dollars. They'll say overheads are going to go up by five to seven yep. percent, right? So we've got to have it. It's going to be a tough year if that's the way they think. We've got to have at least ten percent growth, mm -hmm. right? And then they put the budgets in based on that. Yep. But no one's brought into those budgets with them. No. Right. So. Even if you take that model and you go, that's ten percent, that's budget, right? What I would do is I would then take another figure, which is a stretch figure. Yep. 
and I'd say to my team, right, this is the figure we're going for this year, and this is a stretch figure. Yep. Right. If you don't have to talk about the budgets, that's great. But if you have to talk about the budgets, and in that stretch figure, I'd leave a bit in for them. Yep. Right. As an incentive. Okay. And uh, I would then build a business around the stretch figure. Yep. Right. And and get the team behind me by a stretch figure and help the team and try and help them grow as well. Yep. Because I can guarantee if you aim, aim at the stretch figure and you put the strategy and work ethic and a skill level encouragement and work out work with the team to be better themselves and including yourself. Yeah. And you aim at the stretch figure. You really want that stretch figure, not yeah. just for yourself. You want it for them because yeah. they're going to get something out of it as yeah. extra as well. Yeah. And 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 I guarantee if you aim at a stretch figure, that you will be budget will become a thing that you expect. I'll give you an example. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. What's an example? An example of that is a business at the moment that is aiming at is struggling in the market, and this is a true business example, yep. is struggling in the market, they're aiming to get 90% of budget, and they're okay. treating that as an achievement, Wow, because things are tough. Yeah, yeah. Right, or harder. Yeah. Well, just say they got harder. Yeah. Um, what happens is, when you start thinking, real, acknowledging 90%, Yeah. What happens is 80 starts becoming acceptable. Yeah, you start, right. everything starts to go down, right? right? Well, 100% it does. And, uh, you know, so even when budget is there, mm. it sort of needs to be done because you've planned on profit levels out yeah. of that, you've planned on investment, you've planned on staff, pay rises. Yeah, you've you planned know, on that, future growth. Well, that's, future well, that, well, that's exactly stuff. right. But I'm a great believer in you need the stretch figure as well. Mm. You know, I'll, I'll give you a really good example of that with myself. Okay, so I've set a date to consider retiring, the mm -hmm. 7th of October 2031. Yep. I'll be one day under 70. Mm-hmm. But I reserve the right to stick around if I'm still enjoying it. It'd still be <laughs> useful, right? So I've done 50 million in what, 23, 24 years? Yep. 24 years. And going at the same rate as I go today, so I'm, I've got seven years left. Yep. Okay. A stretch for me, it's a figure I really want. 100? No, you can't get there. Because I worked on a figure of, um, I worked. I've got to retain what I've got for a start. Yep. And it's and it's ongoing. I had my best year ever. Yep. So slightly apprehensive there. Mm. I'm working on fifteen percent to twenty percent growth over per year over the next seven years. Yep. I was working on a model in the last ten years of ten percent growth per year. Yep based on that figure 10 years ago. Okay. And I knew, I set the target based on 10 years ago that I'd reached 50 million in December 2023. Mm -hmm. And okay. then I built a strategy around it. Mid-year this year, I was way behind. Uh, not, I was behind yeah. where I wanted to be. But it's amazing if you work a plan out and then work about the strategy, you get lucky. Yeah. Good totally. things happen, Yeah. right? Yeah, well, yeah, things conspire. Well, because if you don't know where you're going, how do you know how to get there? Yeah, you don't. How do you know what to do to get there? No, right? right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 30 million in the next seven years. Okay. So it's about what's that? Four million two hundred or four million three hundred thousand. Just so eighty million. Know. Yeah. So to do eighty million Brilliant. by then, right? So if you do so, fifty is obviously a bit slower because you've got to learn to build a business. Yep. Right, and you get the business up to a pretty good level. And then it actually gets harder yeah. to grow it each time. Okay. But because you've got to get better again or just do something more special yep. than, because the market just doesn't give it to you. No. And clients just don't throw it at you. No. So 
So okay. it's gonna that's a that's a pretty big stretch. So so hope's not a strategy number one. Number yeah. two is you set a goal and set a clear even uh, a clear plan for that around sales goal, okay. and then also and adopt a stretch goal into that. What's next? Because you're saying you're right. You're not just going to get there. So what do you actually have to do? Like what's your next? What's your next thing? Um, you've got to throw retention in there. We okay. you know everyone talks about growth without retention. Yep. yep. You don't have growth without retention. Yeah, so securing retention. Yeah, yeah. It's looking after your existing business. Yep. Because all I hear from salespeople and sales managers is they're really only interested in growth. Going and get new stuff. Yeah, only yep. interested in growth. Yeah. What about the people you got? Yeah, yeah. They're actually more important they than what you haven't got. Totally. <laughs> yeah. You know, so a business should work harder on them, I yeah. thought. Yeah. Right. Yeah, building those relationships stronger, helping them win, presenting new products, new making sure that they get the latest and greatest of what's what's going on in the world, you know? Yeah. And you can and you know, you can add value to them, those existing clients. They might have a bit more budget as well. Yeah. Right? But ultimately you're gonna to have to get growth, you're gonna to have to bring them new clients and retention. Yep. Right. And, you know, my only time I get disappointed about not prospecting is when a good sort walks into the business that some of the reps got. Yeah. And I thought, and I sort of knew them or knew of their business. Yeah. And I thought, Oh, you're going to oh, help them? I wish I, wish I could. You know, yeah, I wish yeah. I'd got off my butt and gone and done something about <laughs> it, right? Um, there's a lot of business out there for all of us, but we've also got it. We've got to get an outside in and inside out thing going. Yep. So, an outside outside in is quite simply is bringing some clients into your business, and the inside out is everyone working for those clients that are on the outside. Yep. And uh, you know, clients, we talk about them, or we don't talk about them. We think on the inside, the most important thing is what our process is and what we're doing. Yep. You gotta have all that. But if you're not adding value or doing something more for clients, yeah. or think you're working for a client, even if you don't deal with them directly, you know, why, why I'd question why you're there, Yeah, right? I think it's a massive one. You are actually working for the client, not the other way around, right? Well, well a lot of, yeah, well, a lot of people think, yeah. a lot of people think they don't deal with clients. Yeah, yeah. And look, I think it's easy to get that way if you work in a in a business and you get paid. You might not see what's going on really, right? You know, but as a business owner, it's the ultimate commission, right? Like you are working for the client, you know. Um, and and same in sales. Well, I think we should bring clients in to talk to the staff more mm. often, right? Yeah. So it's a great idea. So, so we actually <laughs> realize everyone actually realizes why we're all there yeah yeah you know you know i'm a, i'm also a great believer in a business too a lot of people look for new products and new things to do to grow their business yeah but they don't even the products they sell they don't do the best job they can with the products they already sell yeah yeah so you got existing business and new growth opportunities yep right. surely you'd work harder on being the best you could be at your own products. Yes. You know, and before you introduce new products. Yes, totally. I mean, I got told by a senior person recently that radio is a sunset business. It's um, it's on its it's 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 sort of done. It's peaked, right? Yep. I can tell you now, it's fought everything, radio. Yeah. From Spotify to digital yeah. radio to all sorts of things. It's for all sorts of media products and its revenue is still absolutely solid and the radio side of my business is still growing. Yeah. I think it's a great point that you bring up though. Make your product better. So so like if you're, you know, you, you okay, you've, your hope's not a strategy. You've realised, hey, you've got to, you know, actually get a bit of focus going into 2024. You're going to set a sales target and you actually set yourself up with a, with a, with a really good, uh, nice stretch goal. 
Um, you're going to look at retention, you're going to add some prospecting in there, but one thing you're also going to work on is making your product better. And I think that's that's a golden takeaway because too many businesses, they, they actually get in trouble because they go out there and market a product and tell the world about it, but the product is not as good as it used to be. So whether because they diluted that product and they've tried to get a bit from over here, a bit from over there, um, but actually just make your product better, you know, uh, and, and know what your product does for your, for your customer. I think that's the, the point that you've raised there as well, is you know actually what radio does for your customer, you know, and you know because you've got the boots on the ground, it's not a sunset product, you know, if anything, you know, to, to the right target audience, the who you are, where you are, and what you have to offer is still on point, right? What I love too now of the digital world is, you know, I can use radio, you can see increased traffic to websites, you can in, in Google, you can see brand search as opposed to category search, mm. right? Yeah. And you can actually see the engagement. Yeah. And, and you know, we can actually measure different creative, mm. how it works as well with yeah. the digital space. And, uh, and, and I think digital and radio go very well together. Yeah, totally. Right, because radio is, gets to people that weren't thinking of buying your product. Mm. And I really like that. Yeah. They weren't even considering you yeah. as a business. Yeah. Because they're on their own time. and yeah. their own social time, whether it be in their car or yeah, yeah. whether they be listening to um, MediaWorks products on Rover over the summer period, which is our digital product through. Um, so, you know, I think it's a great, product in the mix mm. right you know and I'm also a great believer all media works it's just a matter of getting the right creative some works better than others but I just think it's a matter of just getting the right message out there and continually doing something you know spending one off spends and putting all your eggs in one basket and hoping it works is not ideal no right no because why would people just turn up because you've decided to have a one-off go to sell some product why would yeah. they just all turn yeah, up yeah, yeah and it doesn't happen over 90 days either like it's a long period of time where if you're really going to grow a business you've got to be committed to it right yeah i think that's what scares a lot of people when it comes to advertising marketing it doesn't scare the owners that, that are operating at a certain level because they already know, they already had, had experience, but maybe the newer or, or less experience, it does scare them to spend that money. What would you say to those people when they're looking at their plan for 2024? Um, I would just suggest that you put a percentage aside yep. for advertising yep. of your turnover yep. and find someone good. Yeah. Right, that's a secret. Yeah, totally. Find someone good that's not just there to take your money. Yeah. And, and actually, interview them. You yeah, know, actually right. ask them some better questions. Well, you know? Yeah, and that's right because, you know, the product radio, a lot of people don't even use it right. Yeah. Right? Yeah, totally. Right? They just don't. No. They don't pay the right price for yeah. the best product. No. And they just don't know how to yeah, use yeah. the frequency to go with the creative. Yeah. Right? So, so true. So they don't know how to use it. I always have a story, a couple of stories I used to tell, and uh, I still tell. Is I used to sit inside, sit outside a client's place in the car, and I'd think about everything they might say and every, how I'd respond. Yep. Because I was apprehensive about going out. Yeah. And then I'd get in there and I'd get, I was, I was worn out by the time I got in there. That's going to say. Yeah, that's right. And I was worn out by the time I got in there. And then what would happen is I'd go back in the car, absolutely worn out, and think it was nothing like what I rehearsed. Yeah, right? yeah. And I'll never forget too, once I went into a car dealer and um, it wasn't Paul Kelly. And uh, he said to me, I walked past all his cars in the yard and I worked out they were all about $40,000, mm -hmm. right, on average. And uh, and I know in a $40,000 car, there's a certain amount of margin. Yep. And um, so I got in there, the guy um, tried to drop the average price to 30000 I said, well, it's poor like forty, but let's just run with your thirty. And then you know, I said this figure, and he halved that on the margin. I said, well, that's fine, that halved that margin, right? I said, how much do you want to spend? I, I said, how many cars do you want to sell first? Oh, I want to sell 20 cars. Okay. 
So you've told me it's three thousand dollars a car. Yep. That's sixty thousand mm. dollars. So how much do you want to spend? I want to spend five. So That's you want to spend five to get sixty. I said, You'll be spending that with me every week. Yeah, yeah. He said to me, But you told me your product was good. I said, My product's outstanding. But then you think yours is as well. Yeah, yeah. And I said, Business doesn't work like that, you know that. And he said, oh, well, you know, I'll give you $5,000, you sell me 20 cars, and I'll do more business with you. <laughs> I said, well, it's not going to happen. No. Right? I said, what is your message? Oh, we've got great cars, we've got a great range, the quality, uh, <laughs> whatever. I look at them and buy them myself. I went, cool. How many other people do that? Yeah. He said, what's that going to do with anything? I said, it's got everything to do yeah. with it. You're not unique. It's not different. If you've given me three thousand dollars off a car, yeah, maybe, right? Yeah, but the reality is, but, but anyway, it was quite interesting. So we end up agreeing on something that I thought could work. Yeah, and uh, it worked, and we kept doing some business for a while. But I think the thing about it is, you've got to know your product. Hmm. You've got to understand gross profits. Yeah. You've got to understand a little bit about business. Yeah. Because if you don't, life's going to be so much harder for you. Yeah, and yeah, totally. In any sales role. Well, you can't have better conversations. Like you have, you had a great conversation with that business owner because you could call him on what he was talking about. You know, because you actually knew the truth. And I think that's that's so valuable to you as a person, isn't it? Oh, 100 percent. Because if you didn't, you would have you would have got pushed over by him. You would have been a pushover. You would have taken his five grand and did bugger all. Well, there is the problem is if you if you don't do it right and you take their money and mm. you don't understand what you're doing wrong, it's all right. Yes, yeah. it's, it's it's hard for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, totally. And also your risk of not getting a repeat business goes up. And you know, this I've got a simple saying. I try to stick to it: quality in, quality out. Yes. As opposed to shit in, shit out. Yeah. Right. Totally. You know, if I'm selling a shit product, then I'm probably going to get a shit, a bad result out. Yeah, exactly. Right? You know, if I sell the right product, the right frequency, and the right investment based on my knowledge for their expectations and what they want to achieve, we match all those up. Yeah. We're a lot better chance, aren't totally. we? Totally. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Well, the thing is, a lot of things in business are actually quite simple. The challenge is, um, you know, you've got to you've got to actually get the knowledge to understand. Look, hey, sometimes you don't know what you don't know, and 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 realize that there is a different level in a lot of things, right? There is a different level in dealing with different radio reps, right? Not all radio reps are created equal. Not all digital marketing companies are created equal. Not all media is created equal. There are people that are on the inside that probably know because of longevity and being around, they know. Uh, a lot more uh, down the track because they've dealt with a lot of stuff before, right? So they can help you make a better decision. So you're sitting here and it's and it's you know the fourth of Jan and, and you're listening and you you're looking to make a better. Uh, for your business this year, you know, you need to make sure hope is not a strategy. You need to make sure you're going to have a sales target. So you need to look after the customer you got, start prospecting, but also, you know, make that product better and, and make better decisions. One thing I would say, if you're looking to advertise on radio, you need to give this guy a call. You need to give Murray Hale a call. You need to look him up. Uh, we'll put some links to, to the show notes of how you can get a hold of Murray, especially on LinkedIn. Um, because, you know, if you want to get looked after and you want to do this marketing game and this advertising game correctly, you know, you need to speak to someone with a bit of experience because looking at those figures that you want to achieve in 2024, you're going to need some help with that. Uh, And the best place to start is to help this guy get to 80 million, I reckon, you know, he ain't going to do it by himself. He's going to actually, (laughs) he's got a goal and he's actually going to need some help. So Murray, I really appreciate you coming on today. Is there any one last thing you'd like to leave people with before, uh, before we sign this one off? Yeah, look, if, if anyone wants a hand with anything, even if it's some questions that just helps them in business, yeah, I'm more than happy to do it regardless of would I make any money out of it, yeah. right? Yeah. And I am because you've got to be genuine about these things and I want to be genuine about these things and I would love to help you grow in 2024 and let's not be worried or scared of what we're putting out there. No. And, um, you know... Have a real go. Yeah. 
have a budget, have but have a stretch target. Yeah. Have a go at it and put something in it for your team. Yeah. Right. I love that. And that that becomes fun then. Yeah. Right. Budgets sometimes become self limiting and a burden. It's quite funny when you put an aspirational figure in there, what a team can actually do. Yeah. Because you're going to build something around it. So best of luck in 24. You've got a new government, new opportunities. New opportunities. You know, um, and I think it's pretty exciting. And uh, there's some great people out there, so hopefully I'll meet some new people as well. Yeah, so. totally. And thanks very much to all the people that work with me now who without them I wouldn't be able to do this podcast totally. with this number. I said at 47 I'd have you back when you got the 50. Now you got the 50. I'm going to have to have you back when you get the 80. Well, that's right because... That's, <laughs> might not be called a podcast then. Yeah, well, yeah, well <laughs> that's right. As long as we're still here, Scott. I might have a TV show. Yeah, you know? that's right. As <laughs> long as we're still here, Scott. Yeah. And still selling. Exactly. That will be fantastic. So happy selling. Have a great Christmas with your families. Best of luck in 24. Hope it goes really well with you. And uh, love to help at any stage. Awesome. Hey, thanks, Murray. We appreciate it. Hey, guys and girls, listening, this man, going 80 million, done 50. I want you to share this podcast. That's all I need you to do. Bounce into 2024 by sharing this podcast. That's your number one goal after you've written everything down. So make sure you share it because here's the thing. Someone might need to hear this message today. Someone might need to hear some of the things that Murray shared uh, that's going to help them grow their business. So I really appreciate you listening. All the best for 2024. I'll we'll have some great guests lined up for 2024. Until then, have fun and remember, always celebrate your victories.